Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. Fifteen years ago, United Nations computer models predicted the demise of sea ice off the coast of Alaska. And they further predicted that this was going to lead to the demise of polar bears. That was in 2007. And on July 16, 2007, most of the coast of Alaska and northwest Canada didn't have any ice. There was a gap. This was one year after Al Gore's movie An Inconvenient Truth was released. And he said that we only had until the year 2016 to save the planet from global warming. For this achievement, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. At the Nobel Prize ceremony 15 years ago, Al Gore solemnly predicted an ice-free Arctic by the year 2014. Another new study to be presented by U.S. Navy researchers later this week warns it could happen in as little as seven years. Seven years from now. In the last few months, it has been harder and harder to misinterpret the signs that our world is spinning out of kilter. So according to Al Gore, the Arctic should be ice-free right now. But there's lots of ice in the Arctic now, and it goes up all the way to the coast of Alaska and northwest Canada. Fifteen years ago, on July 16th, there was a large gap where there was no ice. But this year, carbon dioxide levels are higher in the atmosphere, yet there's no gap in the ice. There's lots of sea ice in the Arctic now, but 6,000 years ago, when carbon dioxide levels were much lower, there may have been no ice in the Arctic at all. Mean July temperatures along the northern coastline of Russia may have been 2.5 to 7 degrees Celsius warmer than they are now. The Arctic was much warmer 5,000 years ago when trees grew all the way to the edge of the Arctic Ocean in Canada. Yet despite the warm summer weather and the lack of sea ice, the polar bears survived just fine. According to Al Gore, global warming burned up the Earth in the year 2016. But one year later in the year 2017, federal officials were still pushing the same propaganda about polar bears. Federal wildlife officials on Monday called climate change the biggest threat to the survival of the polar bear and warned that without decisive action to combat global warming, the bears would almost certainly disappear from much of the Arctic. So the story was that unless you gave up your reliable source of low-cost energy, cute, cuddly polar bears were going to go extinct. The message of sympathy for polar bears resonated with greens all over the world. And this woman jumped into the polar bear enclosure at a German zoo in order to comfort a bear which she believed was threatened by an increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Apparently, her visit didn't go exactly as planned. Now let's go back to 1971, before Joe Biden arrived in Washington, D.C. National Geographic published this map of Arctic sea ice in October 1971. As you can see, in 1971, there was no sea ice off the coast of Alaska or northwestern Canada. The polar bears didn't go extinct, and carbon dioxide levels were much lower at that time. About two-thirds of the increase in carbon dioxide since the 19th century has occurred over the last 50 years. The 1990 report of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reported that there wasn't a lot of Arctic sea ice in the early 1970s. And they said satellite observations have been used to map sea ice extent routinely since the early 1970s. The American Navy Joint Ice Center has produced weekly charts which have been digitized by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. But now that same agency claims that the satellite record began in 1979. They're hiding all the data before 1979 when sea ice extent was much lower. 1979 was the peak year, so by hiding all the data before 1979, NOAA can make it look like the sea ice is disappearing. If they showed the low sea ice extent during the early 1970s, it would completely wreck their story. There was a lot of ice in 1979 because it was the coldest year on record in Iceland. The warmest year in Iceland was 1939, and temperatures cooled dramatically over the next 40 years. During the summer of 1974, Time magazine predicted a new ice age. They said, telltale signs are everywhere. 
From the unexpected persistence and thickness of pack ice in the waters around Iceland, to the southward migration of a warmth-loving creature like the armadillo from the Midwest. Since the 1940s, the mean global temperature has dropped about 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit. In 1973, researchers at the University of Colorado reported, Pack ice around Iceland is once again becoming the serious hindrance to navigation it was during the Little Ice Age of the 17th and 18th centuries. The data makes it pretty clear that there's no correlation between the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and the amount of sea ice in the Arctic. Now let's go back in time almost 450 million years ago when carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere were 10 times higher than they are now. With very high CO2 levels in the atmosphere during the late Ordovician, Earth experienced an ice age. For millions of years during the late Ordovician, Earth was largely covered by ice with carbon dioxide levels 10 times higher than now. The United Nations models are failing because they are based on the superstition that carbon dioxide controls the amount of sea ice. There's no science behind what these people are doing. They're simply generating propaganda with the purpose of demonizing low-cost, reliable fossil fuels. In fact, there's more sea ice now than there was 15 years ago when Al Gore won the Nobel Prize and predicted an ice-free Arctic by the year 2014. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on these scamsters for the past 14 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, Caesar, Tokianupla on the web at realclimatescience.com.